What's happening guys, this is Sir William and today I want to talk about geotagging. Geotagging by definition according to the Google box is adding the geographical information into a photograph or video. Essentially anytime that you share the exact location or coordinates of a specific point of interest that is geotagging. Whether or not it's your favorite campsite, your favorite waterfall, off-road trail, or even that really dope overlook spot that you took a picture of and posted on Instagram. Now most of the time geotagging is done by people sharing things like right routes, maps, tracks, or even the exact coordinates of, you know, special monuments, sceneries, overlooks, or even their favorite campsite. There are some times where it's done unwillingly or unbeknownst to the person that's taking the picture, and that is whenever they take a picture on a location-enabled device such as a phone or a tablet, anything of that nature, it will actually embed the location into the picture unless you turn that setting off. What happens then is whenever you upload it to social media, people see where it's at, and there are folks out there that know how to go in and retrieve the location data off the picture and find the exact spot where the picture was taken. I know that seems kind of creepy, but there's actually people that make a hobby out of this. The way that I found out was after I took a picture of a canyon with some hieroglyphs on it, I couldn't remember the trail that I was on, so I posted that picture into an online forum and I asked if anybody was familiar with the area and knew what the trail was. Somebody then responded back and gave me the exact coordinates of where I took the picture from. Whenever I asked him how he did that, he told me exactly what I just described, that there was location tags inside of that picture, and it was kind of a hobby of his to find out where pictures were taken. You might find that a little bit creepy, and I kind of find it a little bit creepy too, but nonetheless, this is how geotagging is done. So now that you're familiar with what geotagging is, how geotagging is done, let's talk about geotagging. It's been a topic of discussion now, not only in the overlanding community, but the off-road community, the camping community, the hiking community, fishing community, hunting community, basically everybody that enjoys enjoys the outdoors have talked about geotagging and whether or not they're either for or against it. Some folks really like the idea of sharing these secret spots so that others can explore them. Some folks really hate the idea of sharing the secret spots because they don't want people coming and messing them up. That being said, I haven't formed an exact stance on geotagging because on one hand, I really like the fact that people geotag places because if it wasn't for people geotagging places, then I wouldn't have been able to explore half the places that I've been able to go to. Now, on the other hand, I also understand that there's some places out there that couldn't handle the influx of traffic that it would receive if a lot of people were to find out its whereabouts. So whenever somebody takes those coordinates, puts them on social media, now thousands if not millions of people have access to find the whereabouts and the influx in traffic could actually damage these spots. So here's the deal. If you walk through your yard the same exact path every single day, you're going to eventually wear a little area out of your yard. It's just how it is. You invite 500 of your friends over and they walk the same exact path every single day, you're going to wear it out a whole lot faster and a whole lot deeper. Most of the time these places are not accessible by a main road. You have to go through some sort of off-road trail or hiking trail or different trail like that. And then what happens is inevitably with the influx of traffic with a lot of people coming to it via social media posts or the sharing of routes, maps, trails, different things like that, it causes it to wear out and erode a little bit faster than what has previously happened. And then what happens is you find that trails get shut down, areas get shut down, or people lose their right of access, different things like that. Let's not even talk about the bad apples of the bunch. No matter how much we echo tread lightly, pack in, pack out, treat it better than you found it, different things of that nature in this community, there's always still going to be people that do not treat the land properly. I don't think for the most part that the people that are looking for tracks or maps or these secret spots or the actual coordinates, different things like that, I don't think that these people are the ones for the most part that are to blame for the massive amounts of trash and different things that you find around the U.S. and the different campsites. I'd like to think that that's just local people that don't know how to act right, but I don't know. There's going to be bad apples in every bunch. Um, what I'm talking about, though, is solely just the traffic itself, uh, regardless of the bad apples. Knowing that the bad apples will be there, but regardless of the bad apples, just the traffic alone. Also, you have the adventure aspect. One of the things I don't like about geotagging is whenever you give people specific tracks, specific coordinates or specific maps and directions to places, oftentimes it takes the sense of adventure out. For example, one of the things that I really enjoy about overlanding and camping and adventure
adventure travel is the fact that there's a lot of unknown. Also, I like living in the moment. And one of the ways that I live in the moment is I actually have to map out the trail as I go. This is oftentimes why I have no tracks when folks ask me for trails and stuff like that that I've been on because oftentimes I really don't know what trails and stuff I've been on. All I've done is I've downloaded an area and then I navigated from one point to another point and tried to do it either off-road or uh, avoiding highways or different things like that. For example, whenever I overlanded from Chattanooga to Asheville, what I did was I went on Gaia, I downloaded the area that I knew I was going to be in, uh, basically in between the two places, and then I navigated through the area. And the way that I did that is the same way that I used to perfect those little mazes that you saw in coloring books, which by the way, if you don't know the trick to those, start at the finish and then go to the start. And that's how you can win every time. Basically doing that same exact method, I navigated my way from Chattanooga to Asheville. Now, of course, I came across a lot of different closed roads. I came across a few different obstacles, different things of that nature. If you want to check that video out, you should go do so. It's a pretty cool video. Also, by doing that, you come across some aha moments and you come across them a whole lot more times. It's a bit double-sided because also you get a time like whenever I was in Zion National Park and the bartender told me about this really cool spot where I could dangle my feet off of the face of the Grand Canyon. Had he not basically geotagged by telling me the exact coordinates of where I needed to go, then I wouldn't have found that place and I wouldn't have enjoyed that epic adventure, which was awesome. And I'll also share the link to that video too. But nonetheless, it was a 60 mile dirt road to the edge of the Grand Canyon where I literally set my feet on the edge of the Grand Canyon. I would have never found that place had somebody not geotagged it for me, right? So with all that being said, I'm kind of debating on where I stance with uh, geotagging. And I wanted to open up a discussion here on YouTube about geotagging. And I also wanted to get the opinion of some other popular overlanders that you may have heard of before. So whenever I was at Overland Expo East, I had had a chance to catch up with a couple of them, get their opinions about geotagging, and I wanted to share with you guys what their opinions were on geotagging. Whether or not you're for it or against it, let me know how you feel in the comments, and also let me know why you're for or against geotagging. Thanks for watching the video. If you would, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button, or if you didn't like it at all, hit the thumbs down button. Also, if this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome, and please go take a look at some of the other videos where I travel all around the U.S. camping, overlanding, and my lightly modified modified Toyota 4Runner. I appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, peace. So I'm here with Michael from Overland Bound and I hey wanted guys. to talk about geotagging. Oh, so yeah. it's a big conversation in this it field. Is. A lot of people say do it, a lot of people say don't do it. My thoughts on it is if it wasn't done then I wouldn't know where to go. Yep. And I feel like a lot of people feel the same way. Yep. And your thoughts on it when we talked were a little bit different in a sense yep. that if we, res if we take care of it and we're responsible about it, then it's okay. Yeah. So tell us what you think about geotagging. Whenever I hear about any subject matter, it could be rooftop tent or ground tent, synthetic or steel cable. Whenever I hear these polarizing um, uh, uh, positions on a topic, I never take the polarizing position because neither one of them are right. Yeah. You got to do a little bit more. You can't be lazy about it. You got to think about it more and you got you, you to gotta really look into it. The deal with geotagging is that depending on how many people are going to see it, etc., you do have to be responsible. I know many people that will geotag the area, but yes. not a specific place, and they'll say, this is the general area I went to. Yep. I really like that because then it also maintains people's ability to explore. They get to go to the general area and then discover these things for themselves. And that's what adventure is all about. Yeah. So you're not serving it up on a silver exactly. platter. You're saying, hey, here's the general area. There's some great places to see. Go and explore. And I really like that take on it. I have to talk about the reality about technology these days. Um, I want to touch that as kind of a separate, separate topic. The notion that you can keep a place hidden yeah. is false yeah like it's if you think about it as soon as you think about it a little bit more I mean so since the 1950s um, you and I were chatting the other day since the 1950s the the population of the planet has more than doubled right and and if you really appreciate that fact um, you can kind of figure the impact of it I right now 
Um, <clears throat> not by choice. Right now, I live in a, in, a, in a highly populated area, the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been there for 20 years for, for my profession and, and work uh, prior to Overland Bound. I've seen the difference that that has made just in, in traffic. Area. It is a, it, it, it's an extreme difference. It's, yeah. it's, it's just changed how long it takes to get from point A to point yeah. B. Now, why am I bringing all this stuff out? Because Google Earth, Google Maps, you know, the open source uh, mapping projects, these places are knowable, you know, either by satellite in imagery or what have you. So the really important thing that we as a community can do is to educate, because you're not gonna keep the place hidden. Not yeah. for long, Yeah. right? People yeah. are gonna know, and, and even if they don't know about it today, they will. So if your mindset is, I'm gonna keep that place hidden, you're, you got a false start. Yeah, you're fooling yourself. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, <laughs> yeah. you know, a little yeah, bit. You might sure. be able to delay the inevitable, but right now I would not say we exercise good proper land use. As, yeah. a, as, a, as a society, we do not. So what we gotta do is we gotta hustle our butts off yeah. to educate people as fast as possible so that those, the, those you know, cherished places don't get wrecked sure you get the same messages as I get hey man do you have your tracks from when you went to yep. such and so and the the simple answer is one no because typically I just end up there because yep. I just go to an area and I explore the area so I don't yep. know where it's at I don't know what I'm doing I'm just exploring the area yep and so that's what I tell people I'm like look get a map download an offline map 40 mile radius whatever it is yeah and just go explore that area yep. and, and be then, careful <laughs> yeah and, and, and take care of it yeah you know yeah leave it better take than you found it. it that's one of our founding principles is leave it better than you found it and so we really educate around that because you know that's how our places are going to stay open and what i will say is you know we have the trail guardian program we're we're now we have a goal to adopt a trail in every state as a start just as a goal not that that will be enough but it'll be a dent and our members put boots on the grounds and actually go out there and take care of it. Hey, we can all educate. So you guys um, educate yourself about proper land use and then spread the word. And hopefully, you know, in a few, for, a few short years, we'll get to a point where that's how everybody is thinking and it'll be Mindset. less of a talk, uh, yeah. less of a conversation. Yeah. And don't be afraid to be yeah. that guy. And, and yeah. I am that guy. If, yep. if you drop something on the trail, if you leave something behind, I will call you out on it. And don't be afraid to be that <laughs> yeah. guy. Like, and the, it's okay. You can do it respectful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but also, be it's, that guy. it's a huge thing leading by example. It is a huge thing. If you're just, if you're out with a group of people, and you're the guy that is out there picking up somebody else's trash at the end of the night before you roll out other people the next morning you're going to see that other people picking are doing that trash, so you guys can't make a that. you can't yeah. make a difference yeah cool yeah. man all right I man appreciate hey. you talking with yeah, us absolutely My and pleasure. go on to overland bound yep. um people are all the time like yep. i said that they're asking where are tracks where's this every time i plan a trip to anywhere new i'm surfing overland bound yep. i'm going into the forums there i'm seeing what they are i use the search bar which cool. is is highly recommended on any cool. forum as you guys <laughs> probably know i use the search bar look for the area you can find all kinds of cool information yep you'll probably find somebody that wants to meet up with you out there i know i've met up with people out yep. there that i've never seen before in my life great and uh and and we go to a, a random spot that we pick and and that's it so yeah. get on overland bound check it out and geotag or not geotag tell us what you think down in the comments i'm here with cora from torque masters and aaron brown from the garage shop and we're talking about geotagging and you brought up the point that geotagging and you know archaeological you know history sites and things like that you're not a fan of correct um, yeah. Just going out there and finding it, you are a fan of. Yes, absolutely. And you bring up an interesting concept about these places. It, they don't have a whole lot of forest service or right. rangers to come by and clean up after folks. So out west, there are a lot of small archaeological sites that are not in a national park or something like that. So they're listed in archaeological maps, but not on Google Maps. They're not on maps that are available to the public because they want to keep those areas protected. They want to keep it relatively unseen. The Forest Service and BLM doesn't have the staff power to sit by one little kiva in a cliff, you know, 20 miles away from a road uh, to protect it every day. So I'm not a fan of geotagging those sites. A beautiful lake or a nice scenic view on a mountaintop I think that's okay. If it's open to the public, public land, and people want to go explore and see something beautiful, I'm okay with that. 
definitely going to. So, Aaron, I know for sure doesn't like to share some of the sites that he's been to, because I'm still trying to figure out what the hell a Jarbridge <laughs> is. Well, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the geotagging for a couple different reasons. I mean, the logistics that go into our trips is 30 days over 5,000 miles, and finding things that people haven't found. I think if we if we put those that information out there through geotagging, I think it takes away from some of the your own fun to be able to do your own research and find your own way in there and your own way out. And I think the other thing is is you know us personally, some of the places we go, I'm not so sure I'd feel comfortable sending you, you know people guy. <laughs> people in there. Yeah. It's just not a good situation through some of the trips that we do. I mean, like Cora said, you know, a lake or, you know, a state park or something, yes, but, you know, I would definitely never geotag any, anything that we do. Yeah. I mean, you're welcome to email us, call us, we'll tell you about it, and, you know, tell Maybe you what maps area. to get to get you yeah. in there, yeah. but as far as sending somebody into some of those areas, uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that with somebody I don't know. I think the other thing is, is once you geotag something, it's permanently out there on the internet. I mean, in a lot of the trips we've done, you'll have a, you know, a trail there one week, and the next week it's completely gone. Mm -hmm. So you really, you might be looking at geotag picture five years from now, from today, and get in there and find out that you're there for a long time. You're not coming back, and you're not going forward. Yeah. So it, I, I think that there's, I don't like it. Yeah. I'll pass. You know, I have a lot of mixed feelings. You know, I understand both sides of the of the argument. On the one hand, that information is out there. I mean, the internet, it's, there, you can find so many things, whether through forums or just spending time on Google Earth. Um, I think it's important that there's a sense of exploration and research that goes into everyone's trips. I think that you have a sense of ownership when you research these areas and you go out and you find that epic place. Now, when you snap that picture, do you put in the coordinates so that someone else can enjoy it? Or do you keep it a secret? Um, that's a tough call. Uh, there's, there's good points on both sides of the, of the argument. Um, I definitely don't want to see beautiful places that I've discovered trash simply because I share a photo somewhere. Um, so I think really what the problem is is not so much keeping it a secret as much as encouraging people and educating people on how to care for the land. Granted, you'll always have those people who do not care, never will care, but if we're all working together and there's more hands and boots on the ground where we can actually clean up after these people, it's less likely that they're going to start shutting places down. And I know it sucks and I know that um, the inclination is to film it and say, oh, look at these people, they're crazy, it's terrible, but I think that also negatively impacts what we do by sharing that. That's why when you see us picking up at camp, we're not complaining. We're just we're just doing it. If we all do a little bit every time, if you if you just carry an extra trash bag for every place that you stop, we can make a huge difference. There's more of us than there are of them, so I think that should be the emphasis: is encouraging each other, inspiring each other, educating new people who come along to care for what we have, and then we won't be so worried about whether or not we share those coordinates with. Them. So if you're going to share the coordinates, yeah. share a picture of you picking up the trash in that place, there you go. and then you can cover all your bases. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys get the same exact questions that I get on a regular basis, which is, hey man, can you share your tracks? Hey man, can you show where you're camping? Hey man, where did you do this? Where did you do that? And everybody's got some kind of an opinion on geotagging. I'd like to hear what you guys think about geotagging. For it, against it, don't do it, do it. I haven't developed a real opinion on it yet. I think I think it's a great it's a great tool to have at your disposal to share with friends and stuff like that. But all in all, I, f I feel like anything if you share it online, make it available to the masses. People are gonna take that and do with it what they will. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing or a good thing. I just think that people need to be more responsible with how they treat the sites that they. Yep, so promote the responsibility aspect of it. Clean up after yourself, don't destroy things, don't cut down live trees, leave it better than you arrived. Yeah. That's usually, that's how I try to do it. I'll just tag the state. 
There you go. I like keep it at the state level just because there's places that I really like to be that everybody's got their own secret little space, you know. I mean, at one point in time, we used to sell routes so people could know where to go, but it got really hard to maintain the roads as they change or pass through ownership or gates are installed. And um, felt kind of a responsibility to make sure that the tracks were accurate all the time and it was just a joke. And then, you know, people would just buy them and then just give them to everybody anyway. So I was like, well, this is dumb. Yeah. What are we doing this for? Right. So um, we stopped selling routes. And, and, and the biggest piece of that was the reward or the intrinsic value, I guess is what you could call it, of, of discovering that road or that surface on your own. Like, if you go on Google Maps and you plan your route and you track it all out, and then you just happen two hours into your adventure to find this like epic trail or this beautiful ridgeline gravel road, it'll blow your mind. And if you just had that all laid out for you, you'd never pick up that Oh my God! Look what I discovered. Agreed. You can't, you can't really, you can explore or feel like you're exploring or whatever, but you're not, you're not just really getting out there and doing it. And that's what felt good, has felt good to us over the years. Is like, are you kidding me? Like we found this campsite, or are you kidding me? We found this road. It's not that we're, me or anybody would try to hide anything from anybody. It's the people need to go out and discover that stuff Agreed. for themselves because it feels even better than just seeing where somebody tagged it on Instagram and then just went there. I think there could be some benefit, you know, to use using geotagging, but on that same token, you know, I think um I think the you know the process of exploration, you know, without having it just laid out is very rewarding. Um, you know, I do see, you know, if you're constantly geotagging and putting out these locations to the mass public, it definitely makes it, you know, there's a, there's a, a risk. There's a risk, you know, right, of, of who's going to be using it. But, but then again, on the same token, like I think about like a micro, you know, example like Vermont. And, you know, we explore the Vermont Class 4 roads all the time. And, you know, those are available to the public from the Vermont Transportation Department. Like you can just go right on and and get those town highway maps and go explore. So like, you know, I could see the benefit of using geotagging and maybe not in the sense of going out there and showing people where to go, but giving information on like, you know, what's what's happening in these places that you've been. So like maybe it might be beneficial to tag something, not necessarily this is the route I want, but hey, just a heads up this area on the town map is now closed, mm -hmm. or there's a sensitive issue with a landowner where the abutting property goes through, and you might want to be careful going to this area. So maybe using it as like cautionary information versus you know laying it out. So a few years ago, I was totally for uh, geotagging. I I posted almost every location I was at. Um, then I started realizing that a lot of these places aren't set up to take the type of uh, traffic that social media is. You know, putting out there, so I do not use geotagging anymore. But I'm sure there are a lot of good people that deserve to go there and see what I've seen, but I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah, so um, if somebody can't get a location from you, right, but they see the really cool thing, what is your answer to them? Would... Um, if somebody private messages me and wants to talk to me that way, I'll, you know, I'll usually share. You can pick up on what type of person somebody is pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I'll usually share in a private message, but I'll, I won't put it on the top of the post. Anymore. So you won't make it public for everybody to know, but yeah. if, yeah. Really, if you just get out and explore, you're gonna find something that's really nice anyways. I mean, I, I would encourage you to go out and try to look and find your, your hidden gym anyways. I mean, instead of just going, you know, where everyone else is going, maybe try to get out there and find the spots that are, that are a little less traveled. You know, it, it'll really turn you on to some really nice places to stay. What a lot of people don't realize is whenever you go to these places, it's so easy to get caught up as it's a place, right? Like I'm going to the mall or I'm going to Walmart. That's a place that you're going to. Whenever we go to these places, we're going to like thousands of acreage of land that is just got a, it's just trail systems and it's free land. You can go anywhere and explore all over the place. So realistically, man, just if you just pick up a map, 
or download a map or do whatever you need to do and just explore these places you will find these same areas these same hidden gems all over the place really just got to get out there and find it yourself so as far as geotagging goes i'm going to say that i'm not taking a hard line stance against it but i'm not necessarily taking a hard line stance for it either i think that if we could all do a little better part of encouraging others to explore rather than just giving you a map of a trail system or rather than just giving you locations of you know cool scenic outlooks if we could just encourage the community to just get out more and actually find these places on your own and explore new places i think that you would have a lot more fun i think you'd be a lot better served you're going to find camp spots i mean i don't think that it's been one trip we've taken where we had a plan on where we we're going to stay but no each and every time we find a place that's like really nice yeah and so. that scares a lot of people at first but shouldn't be scared you can camp anywhere on public land it's your land ultimately look into the rules you know uh, blm land public land national forest land gets a little tricky around some of the wildlife management areas gets a little tricky somewhere around the state parks but for the most part man this is your land so uh, as long as you're respectable leave no trace pack in pack out type deal then you'd be good to go and if you continue to do that then we will continue to have these lands and we'll continue to have these resources and we'll continue to be able to do things like what we've done here let me know in the comments down below what do you feel about geotagging um, do you think that people should share, you know, exact coordinates on secret locations, so to speak, or, you know, uh, scenic overlooks or real cool campsites or stuff like that? Or do you think people should do like what I'm telling you to do, which is kind of give a general broad perspective of where it's at and then just say go out there and find it? 